Welcome back to another video today we'll be listening to part 4 of what if Issei was almost killed by Rias Grimori don't forget to like share and subscribe for more now let's begin. Chapter 16. Gotta find something for 3 wishes. Sounds cliche. Scene, drive. Kellogg's insane asylum, underworld. In a large arboretum, a red-headed Rias Grimori is taking what looks to be a casual stroll. Wearing her patient garbs, the woman looks to have little emotion on her face. Stopping for a moment while looking at a large plant, Rias begins to think. Issei. I am sorry. I am so very sorry. But that won't stop me. That won't stop me from getting you back. I will jump through their hoops, I will play the game, but I assure you, when I get out, I will be quite, insane. For you, my love, I will go mad. Rias begins to giggle which turns into an all-out hysterical laugh. Wahahahaha. We can see a few nurses walking quickly toward Rias. One of the nurses, who is wearing a white, turn-of-the-century medical outfit, is brandishing a large and old-fashioned syringe. The other, who is wearing a similar uniform, is holding what looks to be a large turkey baster in one hand and a large glass container in the other. This container seemed to contain a white and viscous substance. The label on the jar reads, Yogurt 2 LBs. Rias stops laughing and gasps. Scene, Hyodo residence. We pan into Issei's old bedroom. On his large California king-sized bed, we can see a multitude of women laying on it. Akino, Kaneko, Irina, Zenobia, Ravel and Rossweiss were all laying shoulder to shoulder, using each other as body pillows. In most cases, this scene would sound quite erotic, however the aura, once felt, would immediately sour the mood. In this dark and dismal room full of nothing but memory, we can feel the depression and regret radiating from all of the girls. Knock knock. Akino lifts her head and opens her eyes. Yes. Hearing Issei's mother from the other side of the door, the woman replies. Akino dear, when was the last time any of you had a meal? Please come downstairs and have a late breakfast with Mr. Hiyoto and myself. We know something is wrong, so you can talk about it with us. If our Issei did something stupid, once again, well, I apologize on behalf of my very perverted son. Akino gains a tick mark. Issei did nothing wrong. Shaking her thoughts away, the ex-queen of the Grimori house now plasters a fake smile to her lips. No thank you Ms. Hiyodo. All of us ate earlier, we are just tired from training at the temple is all. And no, your son is. Ms. Hiyodo waits for a moment then replies, my son is. As a tear starts to make its way out of the left eye of the half-angel, half-devil, Akino chokes the rest of her sentence out. Your son is amazing and you should be proud. I can tell you that I am. We can see Ms. Hiyodo staring at the door with a puzzled look. Issei. Amazing. Well I'll be, but to tell me to be proud of my own son. Of course I am proud. He's my son. Nodding to herself, Ms. Hiyodo decides to head back downstairs while thinking. Where is my son, now that I think of it? Seen, Yasaka Castle. All I can say is, Erm, you got, well, big. Ophis seemed to have appeared only inches from Issei using whatever magic or law bending ability in her possession. Jumping and flinching from the sudden scare, Issei pulls Kuno in closer to him. Kuno is looking up, however, she is unable to see Ophis's face as her large assets prevented such things from happening. Responding to Issei's comment, Ophis nods. From what I've observed, this form is something that you would personally find desirable. This pleases me as I simply had to adjust the physical age of this existing body. This pleases me, it is agreeable that you didn't force me to work too hard on a body that you would find attractive. Why does this make me feel nervous? Or is it flattery? I am unsure. You, Sensei, what is this that I am feeling? Issei has his jaw, agape at the infinite dragon's declaration. Meanwhile, Kunuo is attempting to jump up and down, attempting to meet the eyes of her, new best buddy. Yasaka is at a loss for words as she simply watches the scene in front of her. Kuroka doesn't seem to be paying any mind as she is attempting to change the channel on the TV in frustration. Why is the same thing on every channel? Ophis, Issei, Yasaka and Kuno all turn their heads in the direction of the television once again. Yet another picture of Issei Hiyodo was stretched across the entire monitor with large letters in red posted below. Kunuo runs up to the TV and begins to read in excitement. The rest of the group stay put in confusion and a bit of worry. 
As of this moment, Issei Hiodo is the underworld's most wanted. Many officials from the higher-ups believe that the Red Dragon Emperor was taken against his will and might be incarcerated. Unclear is any further information involving the possible location or faction involved with the kidnapping, however this brings us to another new announcement. As of this moment, our station, including other sister stations, will be broadcasting our first ever, Opai Dragon Hunt. The monitor now flickers to a few locations within the underworld as a newscaster starts to speak up. All are welcome to join the first ever hunt for the Opai Dragon. Groups of no less than five will register at these locations. You will then be assigned a camera crew to follow your whereabouts and conduct interviews. The group that finds the Red Dragon Emperor, and brings him back, unharmed, will receive a personal favor from each of the great biblical pantheons. That's right folks, three wishes. Imagine the possibilities. Please follow the information below for any questions you might have. With that, at a future date, we will have a time and place to begin the broadcast. Until then, thank you for your time and have a great afternoon. All wishes must be approved before being granted. Limitations apply. Please go to 666.net for further information. All wishes must be in accordance with standards which are upheld by Azazel Incorporated. Azazel Incorporated, an LLC with an emphasis of limited liability. Issei chokes. Yasaka has her hand on Issei's back, lightly patting it. Era era, calm down Issei darling. Everything will be alright. Issei looks back up at Yasaka and smiles. No, I don't think it will. Issei and Yasaka break their gaze and look toward Ophis. This will cause unwanted attention. Even with your abilities, Fox, there are pantheons and entities that would find your barriers and illusions to be nothing less than child's play. Yasaka gains a tick mark. Chapter 17. Power Play. Scene, Gregory. Sitting in a large and obsidian-colored brick room, we see a few people sitting at a large and equally black table. At the head of this table, Azazel can be seen, wearing his ever-usual yukata. He has a very serious look as he waits for a reply. Across from Azazel, we can see Valley Lucifer who has an equally serious look. Sitting in the middle of table, we can see Penemu, who is wearing a black blazer with matching skirt. She has a tablet of sorts as she is waiting to resume her typing. Valley simply shrugs, as fun as it is to pluck your feathers, to be perfectly honest with you, no, Azazel, I am not hiding the Sekarutai, nor do I have him in a kidnapped sort of position. I mean, seriously, what would I have to gain in taking that boy against his will? Trying to find anything that would tell him that Valley was lying to him, Azazel scans the devil with scrutiny only to find nothing out of the ordinary. Well, Valley, I do indeed have a plausible scenario in which you would hide him at least. He is your rival, but knowing you, it's all about the fullest. Extreme, going all out in a fight. With that, my assumptions would lie in the fact that you would want Issei to get stronger. Heck, you might even be training him yourself for all I know. Valley smirks. Azazel, I think you are just having a bit of wishful thinking. Wouldn't it be convenient, dare I say, a cut and dry case, if I were to indeed know of Hiodo's whereabouts? Being smacked in the face by the very thick book of logic, Azazel relents. All right. Brat, maybe you have a point. I have a proposal, will you listen? The white-haired Lucifer slightly nods while maintaining a grin. Right, well let's say that you, or I, hear anything about said Red Dragon Emperor, in the near or later future, how about we offer exchanges of information on a temporary basis? That is, until Issei is found. Valley retorts, if he is found, you mean. Penemu stands up as the two on each end of the table look up toward her. Azazel, show some respect valley stop being a pessimist and you over there don't you have anything to add azazel and valley train their eyes on who penemu is speaking with standing up from a chair in the corner we see a blonde man with a wild type of hairstyle he is wearing a maroon outfit with his chest exposed grinning while showing a few of his canine teeth the blue-eyed man opens his mouth riser doesn't have an opinion Riser only cares about bringing that kidnapped shrimp back to Riser's sister. Riser will burn anything that gets into Riser's way. Rolling his eyes, Azazel thinks to himself, stop IT with the third person shit already. Seriously, was he born like this? Did his mom drop him so hard that his brain was too damaged to regenerate properly? Oh well, 
If it makes Ravel feel better, then that would make Issei happy, wherever he may be. Penemu politely replies, Yes, Riser-sama, that is good. You did a good job. You can sit back down now and I will order you a hot chocolate, alright? Riser smiles back at Penemu like a simp. Wow, Riser can tell that this hot fallen wants Riser badly. Hmm, maybe if Riser plays it cool, Riser will get more than just hot chocolate. Penemu smiles warmly while thinking to herself. What a good and simple boy. Oh, I should get him that hot cocoa, maybe a bib too. I should probably talk slower for the poor child too. Oh, what a brave little soul. Meanwhile Azazel and Vali are perplexed at the situation, however the two of them were thinking the same thing. Does she think that Riser is developmentally challenged? Scene, Yasaka Castle, Issei is looking at Ophis with a bit of paranoia plastered to his face. Ophis smiles victoriously, worry not, Red Dragon Emperor, for I can protect you. Yasaka interrupts while pulling Issei closer to her. Not needed, thank you very much. Ophis tilts her head, Fox, compared to my power, you are but a child. I may not look it, also, I am not boasting, however, in my true form, you and your entire faction wouldn't have the slightest hope in even wounding me, let alone defeating me. The drag knows of what I say to be true. It would be inadvisable to test my strength. Yusaka is about to flare her power once again, however Issei pushes the woman behind him as he extends both of his hands out, protecting the fox queen. Ophis's eyes widened at this gesture. That in itself made Issei flinch. Chapter 18. What am I feeling? Scene, Yusaka Castle. Kuno is jumping up and down with both of her hands in the air. Ophis breaks her gaze on Yusaka and looks down at the little fox girl. Sensei. Kunuo stops jumping and puts both of her arms to her sides while smiling. The question you asked me earlier, you know, what you were feeling. Ophis tilts her head and nods. Well, I think you were flattered. You said it yourself. You didn't have to work. That hard. Changing into my larger minion that is. Instead of changing your face, hair color, all of that, you just, what? Oh yeah, aged yourself. Which means that Issei likes you for how you originally were. So, I could call that, flattery, as it made you feel warm and fuzzy, right? Completely ignoring her previous threats to Yasaka, the Ouroboros dragon now places a finger toward her chin as she thinks very hard about Kuno's words. Warm and, fuzzy, moving her hand from her head, now toward her chest, Ophis places a hand near her heart. Warm, Issei, Yasaka looks at both her daughter, Ophis and then Issei. Yasaka then looks back down at Kuno and speaks. Wait, Kuno, honey, I know you're only trying to help, but I don't think that the infinite dragon god is capable of, Yusaka is interrupted. Yes, sensei, you are indeed worthy of teaching me. I agree with your theory involving fuzziness and warm tingles which coincide with the Sekir UT. Thank you for your wisdom, sensei. Ophis smiles. This causes Yusaka and Issei to flinch. Kunuo nods in a victorious pose. For my services, you will now be entrusted into my personal care, Ophis Chan. For I shall instruct you in the ways of the Opai Dragon and, he he he, love, ha 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 ha. Kunuo now begins to giggle frantically while hugging the black dragon. As the little fox princess hugs Ophis's waist, the black haired woman lowers her gaze on the blonde creature and proceeds to place one of her hands on the fox girl's head, slowly petting her furry ears. Yusaka, Issei and even Kuroka notice this and deep breaths escape the three's lungs in a sense of relief. Then Yusaka realizes as she thinks about having Ophis, possibly the strongest being in creation, just hanging out with her family as if it were perfectly normal. Issei could notice the running thoughts that were creating stress within the Yukai leader's mind, her body language was enough to let the most clueless of people know that she was not in a good place. Deciding that doing nothing was a very bad idea, Issei sends a quick thought to Dedraig. Partner, do you think we can trust Ophis? After a quick moment, the Red Dragon replies. Ophis has been known to do many things, however, lying is not something it is known for. I would suggest asking it what it wants with you and why. Tilting his head in confusion as his partner continued to refer to Ophis as an it, rather than a she, or her, Issei was about to ask the question but was interrupted as two grey eyes burrow into his soul. Looking back at Ophis, Issei puts on a nervous smile. Hey, Ophis, Erm, I have a question. 
the infinite dragon starts to walk up closer toward Yusaka and Issei, with Kuno attached. In order to answer the question that both you and Dedrag have, you must get closer. Yusaka is about to speak up, however Issei puts an arm on her shoulder which causes the fox queen to turn her gaze at the boy. Yusaka-sama, it's going to be alright. Thank you for protecting me, thank you for saving my life. But if it weren't for Ophis, Dedrag thinks he might not have awakened for a few months or longer. I don't think she has any malicious intent. Dedrag says that. Dot she, never lies. Dedrag interrupts vocally, I said that it is not known to lie. Issei continues, whatever, same thing. Dedrag interrupts again, it is not the same thing. Issei continues, dude, shut it. Anyway, Ophis, standing only feet from Issei, Ophis nods while continuing to rub Kuno's head. So, I need to ask you something before I come any closer. Again, Ophis nods. I need you to promise me that you will not harm any of these people for any reason. If you can swear to me that you will indeed remain friendly to these very nice yukai, I will agree to come closer, deal. Ophis's smile now, turns into a frown. Red Dragon Emperor, if I had any intention of releasing these living creatures from their mortal coils, I would have done so already. I am feeling another emotion. It does not feel good. Sensei, what is this feeling? I feel as though you look at me like a mindless monster. I don't like that. What is this feeling, Kuno-sensei? Realizing that he probably insulted one of the most powerful creatures to exist, by assuming that she was out for blood, Issei needed to make this right. Before Kuno was able to respond, Issei ran up quickly toward Ophis, which shocked Yasaka. Kuroka regrew another grin as one thought seemed to replay through her mind, drama. Chapter 19. Why do you want me? Scene, Yasaka Castle, standing directly in front of Ophis was now Issei. Kunuo released the infinite dragon god and skipped over toward her mother while responding to Ophis's earlier question inside her own head. Misunderstood maybe, Yasaka takes hold of the princess in a tight embrace while attempting to maintain her composure. Looking directly into this very tall and beautiful woman's eyes, Issei maintains a stoic look. Ophis, I'm sorry for what I said earlier. It's just that you don't have the greatest of track records. Giving assholes like Diodora power. Your power. No offense, lady, but that kinda pissed me off. Somebody died because of that. I had important people that got hurt and, had, important. Um, Issei pauses as his warm eyes begin to look hollow and devoid of life. Important family. No, serving my master. But, I was thrown away. Issei completely freezes in his location and stops speaking. Yasaka's eyes widened at what she was able to hear, however she was unable to see Issei's dead eyes as his back was turned while facing Ophis. Kuroka regains a serious look and begins to walk closer toward Ophis and Issei. Both Yukai were able to see Ophis's reaction to all of this which made them panic. A pure look of concern, including all of the contortions that coincide with the emotion were now present and accounted for. Ophis looked like a human girl who was watching a family member, suffering in front of her. Ophis then spoke. You, are, broken. Tilting her head one way, trying to see a spark of life in those eyes, Ophis then tilts her head the other way. Who, did, did this to you? Ophis raised her voice. The emotionless infinite dragon god was now raising her voice and showing anger and concern. Issei remains still and non-responsive. However a single tear can be seen falling from one of the lifeless brown eyes. Kuno, who was hugging her mother, screamed out, it was Rias Gramori. It was his king. She tried to hurt Papa. Looking toward Kuno, Ophis nods then looks back at Issei. Kunuo now starts to cry as Yusaka pats her daughter's head. Ophis then speaks, as if it were directed toward Yusaka and Kuroka, however she continues to stare into Issei's eyes. So this is why the security has been missing. The two of you are trying to protect him from his master. That is strange considering this Issei is no longer a devil, but rather human. I will assume you removed his evil pieces successfully. Kuroka speaks up. Yeah, it was a piece of cake. Ophis nods. Changing her focus from Issei's eyes, now toward his arm, Ophis speaks. Dedrag, I will be entering, prepare yourself. Issei's arm blows as the red dragon speaks. Wait, what, no. I'm not prepared for something like this. Shouldn't we get to know each other first? Ophis shakes her head no. 
Ophis's smile returns as she raises one of her hands. Placing her index finger, in a pointing gesture, directly on Issei's forehead, the black-haired woman closes her eyes. The moment this happens, Issei's eyes roll back as his eyelids begin to close. Scene unknown. In a dark place, only lit by small and random pits of fire, we can see Issei. He is laying next to one of these pits, on the ground and naked. He is in a fetal position and seems to be sobbing while mumbling to himself. We can see the boy gripping his gut with both hands. It hurts. Why did she have to kill me? What was the point? Even Azazel told me that he never ordered the bitch to do anything, aside from watch me, but no. Something about me must have triggered her to want to do it. Maybe it's the same reason Rias. Yeah, you know, now that I think of it, maybe the problem isn't them, maybe it's me. Yeah, I must be such a fucking slimeball and masochist that I flock to monsters like them. Yeah, I deserve it I guess. Moving his hands toward his heart, Issei begins to bellow. It still hurts. It's because she keeps pouring salt into the wound. Standing next to Issei while looking down at him was no other than the Phantom of Rainier. She had a grin as usual as her arms were folded under her chest. Opening her mouth, the grinning angel speaks. And the best part in all of this. Rias set you up to be killed by me, only to save you when she forcefully inserted those evil pieces which indebted your soul to her will. Oh, how she must have bragged and boosted to her peerage and friends, while you, stupid Issei, stumbled around like a fucking idiot, not knowing what happened. Why did she not stay with you after your transition? It's because she enjoyed watching you wriggle around like a worm, for the first time, in the supernatural world. She fucking masturbated to it. Watching you suffer as her bread and butter you know. Issei looks up at the phantom with an uncontrollable amount of tears ejecting from the poor boy's eyes. Instead of anger, Issei has a look of pleading, as if he is defeated and wants nothing more than to die. Rainer can see this. Her smirk now turns into a strange yet warm smile. But in the end, my darling, I will claim you, once again. Rainer now kneels next to Issei and looks as though she is about to hold him in an embrace, that is until something happens. Black arms with long hands and fingers now jet from the ground. They seem to sprout under and around Issei in infinite amounts. The fallen angel jumps back while extending her wings. Rainer's warm smile was replaced with a look of worry. The black extension started to surround Issei's body which ended in a sudden and purple flash. Within a few moments, Rainer was left alone in the dark room. Scene, Yasaka Castle, Ophis removes her finger from Issei's forehead. The moment this happens, Issei collapses, only to be caught by the Ouroboros dragon. Kunuo screams out, Papa. Ophis holds Issei against her, and with the height difference Issei's head is softly laying against the black-haired woman's very generous chest. Looking at Kunuo now, Ophis speaks. Sensei, do not fret. The Sekir Ut, or as you put it, your papa, will recover. For I have intervened and will continue to do so as needed. Issei's arm now glows, against my better judgment, Ophis, thank you for helping my partner. I can feel that he is at peace, for now. Ophis nods. Yusaka and Kuroka both look at each other, then nod. Yusaka is the next to speak. Ophis Sama, the woman in question looks at the Fox Queen in her usual stoic manner. I will allow you to stay here if you wish. You have helped someone who is dear to my daughter and myself. With that, you have a place in my home. Your faction however, that might become a problem. Ophis nods. My faction will have nothing to do with Kyoto or the Sekir Ut. Apparently, it is important for creatures such as you, to receive a guarantee of one's intentions in the form of a promise. Therefore, I will entertain you in this. Yusaka, Fox Yukai, Leader, Iophis, the Infinite Dragon, hereby swear an unbreakable alliance with those that dwell within this house and territory. This alliance will be sealed, solely with this boy, this human, this same human that I have in my arms. Hyodo Issei Sekir Ut San, Ophis's stoic face now sports a warm smile as she looks down at the sleeping human who is nestled in her bosom. Yusaka thinks of Ophis's words. Kuroka thinks about kittens with Issei and blushes. Kuno has stopped crying and is watching the scene play out as she wipes her face with her sleeve. Chapter 20. Won't you be mine? Scene, Yusaka Castle. In what looks to be a large bedroom, we can see our protagonist laying on a large bed. 
A few chairs surround the bed with familiar people sitting in them. On Issei's right, we see Yasaka with Kuno in her lap. On Issei's left, Kuroka is sitting while having one of her hands placed on the forehead of the boy. Meanwhile, Ophis can be seen, standing at the foot of the bed, simply watching Issei. A golden glow is radiating from the Neko's hand. This same glow seems to be dissolving or rather, Issei seems to be absorbing this light. Yusaka has a serious look while Kunuo is smiling at the pretty light. Kuroka looks to be concentrating as her eyes are closed and her facial muscles look mildly strained. Ophis's eyes widen as she stares deeply into the soul of Issei. Seen inside of Issei's mind, Sirzex, Erm, Oni-chan. Turning her head downward, Issei is met with the blue-green eyes of the ruler of the underworld. Yes, Issei attempts to lift his head however Sirzex uses one of her hands and places it on the back of Issei's head, softly forcing him black down. After adjusting himself in the Super Devil's large assets, Issei relents and decides to speak, even in this position. Well, you see, I am very grateful to be in your sister's peerage. I am grateful that she saved my life. But, do you think she is going to be okay with, erm, um, this? Sirzex takes a quick glance around the room and then shrugs her shoulders. I haven't the slightest clue as to what you are talking about my dear. Issei then uses both of his hands to point in two directions while his face is still stuck against her rather, in, Sirzek's chest. As the super devil looked in the places in which Issei was pointing, the devil then began to chuckle. Fu 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 fu, Issei, you are just too cute. You think that Rias is going to have an issue with Grafia and myself, having a cuddle session with my new brother. Issei looks up at the Mao and attempts to nod the best he can. Fu 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 fu, sweetheart. We are devils. Yes, it's true that marriage is important, however, siblings sharing their lovers is quite a normal practice in the underworld. Again, Issei, we are devils. Thinking about it, Issei decides that what Sirzex is saying must be correct. After all, she runs the underworld. Issei nods. Sirzex nods back and releases her hold on the boy. Issei lays back on his pillow while adjusting his sore neck. Before anything else could be said or done, Sirzex spoke up. Grafia, turning around from the other side of the bed, the wife of the Mao, Grafia, looks directly into Issei's eyes while replying to her wife. Yes, Sirzex Sama, smiling, while placing both of her arms under her head, the super devil relays her order. Grafia, darling, would you like to take over spoiling duties for a bit? I feel as though I have been hogging him all to myself. Issei's eyes widened before Grafia reached out and forced the boy's face into her cleavage. With pleasure, Sirzex Sama. As Issei was being relentlessly cuddled throughout the rest of this night, words coming from both Sirzex and Grafia were repeated throughout the night. Issei, we love you. A bright flash of red. Light and we are in a completely different scene. Mr. and Ms. Hyodo were sitting in their living room with Issei sitting in between them. They were all sitting on a large sofa. This scene must have taken place back when Issei was only a middle schooler as the boy looks much younger. They all seem to be watching a television show. Ms. Hyodo interrupts the flick and begins to speak. Issei, honey, one of these days, you are going to marry a nice, rich and smart girl. You have such a warm heart, I only pray that it doesn't get broken. Mr. Hyodo then speaks up. Don't worry dear, our son is a Hyodo. He will grow up to do great things and make us proud. I have no doubt about it. Issei smiles and blushes. Well mom and dad, I am gonna do my best. Issei's mother interjects, and don't be a pervert like your dad was. Issei's father begins to laugh loudly. Oh come on dear, that isn't fair, I only have eyes for you after all. As Ms. Hyodo's eyes rolled from the comment, Mr. Hyodo coveredly winked at his son. Seen Yusaka Castle, Issei's eyes open, looking at the ceiling for a moment, the boy lifts himself and rests his back against the headboard. Looking toward his right and left, three bodies can be seen. Yusaka and Kuno were curled up together while Kuroka had her head on Issei's lap. Deciding that he didn't want to disturb anyone, Issei proceeded to scan the room. The moment he looked directly in front, past the foot of the bed, a pair of grey eyes stared back at him. Smiling, Issei raises a hand and waves. Tilting her head, Ophis copies the gesture and returns a wave. Showing just the slightest smirk, 
Opus vanishes, silently, in a black cloud of energy. As this happened, Issei could hear the words of the infinite dragon within his own mind. You have fought for so much and gained so little in return. I cannot accept this and nor will you. Kyoto Issei, you will never be alone again. I will always be here. Please rely on me. I will bring you to perfect silence. Issei, be my mate. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe for the next parts one got in my storage.